Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Gangwar and today we'll be studying differentiability lecture 2 and we'll be talking about algebra of differentiability in this lecture. Okay, so let's begin a lecture with the similar topic which we studied back in continuity that was open and closed intervals, differentiability in open and closed intervals, right? Now let's take two intervals. First one is open interval 0 to 10 and second one is 0 to 10 closed interval. Okay, now if you plot this on the number line, this is this 0, 10. And this one is filled circle 0, 10, right? Now, in this open interval case, let's say if you have this point over here, it always has left vicinity and right vicinity. No matter how close we go towards 0, we still have a point on the left hand side and also on the right hand side. How? Let's say if I take 10 is power minus 5 as a point, that is very close to 0, right? I still have 10 is power minus 10 on the left hand side of 10 is power 5, minus 5, right? So we can say that for every point between 0 to 10, we have right vicinity and we have left vicinity. So that means for every point in an open interval inside this particular range, we'll be calculating both left hand and right hand derivative, right? Agreed? Now if we talk about closed interval, in that case, it includes all the properties of open interval, but except we have these two points, right? We have these two endpoints where we cannot calculate both sides of derivatives. Why? Because there is nothing beyond zero on the left hand side. There is nothing beyond 10 on the right hand side, right? So in this case, we are going to calculate right hand derivative. In this case, we are going to calculate left hand derivative. Okay. Only one sided derivative will be calculated for the endpoints and for all the other points, we'll be having two sided derivatives, right? That's about differentiability in open and closed intervals. Now let's talk about identification of non-differentiability. Okay. Now this must be the first point. It has been marked a second, but this should be the first point. All points of discontinuity must be checked. Why? Because if the function is discontinuous, it's definitely non-differentiable, right? If the function is discontinuous, it's definitely going to be non-differentiable, right? So this should be our first point to check. Now, similarly, if you talk about the first point over here, functions in intervals should be checked at points where definition of function changes. It's again similar to continuity. We discussed that we have to check all the points where definition of function is changing. For example, if we have fx equals to x and x square, x positive, x less than equals to zero. So the definition of function is changing at zero over here. So we have to check the point zero if the function is continuous or not. Similarly, we have to check at zero if the function is differentiable or not, right? Now, if we talk about third point, fractional part function and GIF should be checked at all points where the function becomes integer. It's again similar to continuity, right? We have to check all the points where these two functions are becoming integers. Basically inside of these functions is becoming integers and we have to check all these points for differentiability. Okay. Now, the last point is the new one. Modulus function should be checked at critical points for sharp turns. For example, if we have modulus x minus one, right? Now this function would become zero at x equals to one. So critical point is one over here. Basically that means the modulus function would turn, would be having a sharp edge over here, right? would be turning slopes over here. So that's why we have to check all these points when we're talking about modulus functions and differentiability. Okay. So these three points were more or less related to continuity only, but this one is a newer point, which is specifically for modulus function. And now let's solve this question. We have fx equals to this function and we have to find out the points where the function is non-differentiable, right? So we have modulus function over here. We have GI function over here and we have a piecewise function over here. Basically, we have three data points to consider for non-differentiability, right? So the first point to consider is x equals to one because definition is changing at x equals to one. So we'll be checking differentiability at x equals to one. Also, we have this modulus, right? So when this becomes zero, one minus four x equals to four x squared equals to zero, we get x equals to plus minus half, right? But according to this range, we can have just x equals to half only, right? Because we cannot have negative values over here. So other point to check over here is x equals to one by two. Second point. Right? The third point would be where this function is becoming integer. Basically with this function inside function is becoming integer. So x square minus two x is going from here to here. My one to two. Okay. At one, this is becoming minus one, right? At x equals to one, this function is becoming minus one. That is integer at two. This function is becoming zero and it's a quadratic function. So it looks like minus one over here. This is minus one, this is one, and this is two over here and at two, it becomes zero. So it looks like something of this sort, right? So basically it's taking two integral values, this one and this one, 
because we have both in equalities over here equals to 1 and equals to 2 okay so we have two points from here that is 1 and 2 1 is already considered right 1 is already considered over here so we have one more point x equals to 2 to consider for the non differentiability right and now that we have got the points let's plot these graphs let's first talk about this one so we have modulus of 1 minus 4x square okay so if we talk about 1 minus 4x square this is a downward facing parabola why because the coefficient of x square is negative over here that's why it's a downward facing parabola now if we plot 1 minus 4x square what are the points we are having we are having the range of 0 to 1 so if this is 0 and this is 1 for x equals to 0 what we are getting we are getting 1 okay for x equals to 1 what we are getting we are getting minus 3 okay so this is minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 okay this is 1 now since it's a downward facing parabola it might look like something of this sort right and since we have an inequality over here we have an open circle right there closed circle right there and open circle right there now this point would be 1 by 2 because 1 minus 4x square is becoming 0 at 1 by 2 so this point would be 1 by 2 now if you want to take modulus of 1 minus 4x square what we'll be doing we'll be placing a mirror over here right this is what we do to uh, take out the modulus right so this mirror image would be like this okay and this point would be 3 why because we have minus 3 over here that's why we have 3 over here okay now this is the final graph of this particular function modulus of 1 minus 4x square okay we can see that at x equals to 1 by 2 this is not differentiable why because we have a sharp edge over here that's why it's not differentiable at x equals to 1 by 2 and now let's plot the other function that is gif of x square minus 2x where x belongs to 1 2 2 okay now if we talk about x square minus 2x this is still a parabola but an upward facing parabola why because the coefficient of x square is positive over here right now if you want to plot this function what are the points we are having we are having 1 and we are having 2 over here okay now at x equals to 1 this function is taking value as minus 1 at x equals to 2 the function is taking value as 0 okay both fill the circles because we have equalities on both sides okay now the real question is if this is going to dip further and then going up or it's directly going to go up from here right we don't know why didn't we check this in the previous uh, function that was also a quadratic function right but we didn't check it because we were only worried about the point x equals to 1 by 2 how this function is going to behave because that was a critical point of modulus right we have gif over here and if this is going to dip further it's it's going to change the function value in that case it didn't matter right in this case it matters a lot because it's going to change the function value if it's going directly up or if it's dipping further and then going up okay and now that we have got this point let's say we have a x square plus b x plus c now we know that for this quadratic function minimum value occurs at minus b by 2a given that a is positive given that it's an upward facing parabola the minimum value occurs at minus b by 2a right so for this function minimum value comes at x equals to 1 x equals to 1 is the minus b by 2a for this function right now x equals to 1 is the limiting point over here right so this point is over here so we know that it's not going to dip further from there and it's going to go up from here okay got the point and now that we know that our function looks like this one now it has two parts because we have gif over here okay so first part is function value going from minus 1 to open 0 right and the second part is exact 0 okay so from minus 1 to 0 if we take gif of the function what will happen it would take minus 1 as the value right because at open 0 it's still lesser than 0 it's not exact 0 it's going to take minus 1 as the value when we take gif of that function okay now for exact 0 it's going to be 0 so these are the two parts so if we take gif of this function how this would look it would look something of this sort so basically from here to here it's minus 1 and at exact 2 it's going to take value as 0 right and now if you merge the first graph as well in this one this is 1 this is 3 over here So it looked like here to there. Okay, open circle over here. Now you can see that we have a discontinuity at one. We have a discontinuity at two. So that's why the function is not differentiable at one and two both. So finally, we have got three points. We have got one by two, one by one and two. Okay, for one by two, the function was not differentiable because of sharp edge, and for one and two, it's not differentiable because of discontinuity. So we've got three points: one by two, one and two. Okay. And now let's move forward with this question. And I'll keep this as homework because it's a very easy question. 
all you have to do, you have to find out the points just like we did in the previous question and then check, check at those points if the function is differentiable or not, right? Very simple question. And now let's move forward with algebra of differentiability. And if you remember from limits and continuity, we had a table like f g f plus minus g and f multiply divide by g, right? We had a table like this and we're going to have a table like this in this one. The only difference is we are going to talk about differentiability and not continuity and limits, okay? So the first case is one where f and g both are differentiable. Second case is one where f is differentiable, g is not differentiable or vice versa. You can take this as non-differentiable and this is differentiable, doesn't matter. And third case is both are not differentiable, okay? So let's look at the first one. So the first one is pretty obvious. If both are differentiable, f plus minus g and f multiplied divided by g, both are going to be differentiable unless there's a point where the derivative of g is becoming zero, right? Unless there's a point where derivative of g is becoming zero in the denominator, only in that case we have to ignore. Otherwise, in all the cases, if f and g are differentiable, f plus minus g and f multiplied divided by g are going to be differentiable, right? Very simple. And if you want to take examples, you can take x and x square and you can derive using the first principle. We're not going to derive that one because that's very simple, okay? So now let's talk about the important one that is differentiable and not differentiable. In this case, f plus minus g would be not differentiable and f multiplied divided by g would be maybe differentiable. Maybe differentiable, may not be differentiable, okay? Depends. If you talk about the third one, both are not differentiable, then this also becomes maybe, and this also becomes maybe, right? So these three are very important ones. Let's look at the illustration of these four actually, okay? And now let's talk about the first case that is differentiable plus not differentiable. Let's take the example x and mod x, right? So we have the function fx equals to x plus mod x. It's actually plus minus over here, okay? Now, this becomes x plus x or x minus x. This is when x is positive. This is when x is negative, okay? Now, this actually becomes 2x. This becomes 0. Now, if you plot this graph, 2x looks like this one and 0 looks like this one. So, we have a sharp corner over here or basically you can say slope is 2 over here and slope is 0 over here. So on the right hand side and left hand side slopes are not matching. So that's why the function is not differentiable. So we've seen the example of differentiable plus non-differentiable becomes non-differentiable, right? Non-differentiable. And now if we talk about differentiable multiplied by non-differentiable, let's take the same example, x and mod x, okay? Now the function becomes x dot mod x, okay? Now this opens up as x dot x or x dot minus x. This when x is positive and this is when x is negative, right? Now this actually becomes x square. This becomes minus x square. Now if we take the derivative of this individual functions, we'll be getting 2x and minus 2x, right? For x positive and for x negative. Now if you want to calculate f dash 0 plus, we'll be using this function. We'll be using this function for f dash 0 plus. That would be 0 only. And if we take this function, we'll be getting f dash 0 minus that would be zero only. So we can see that f dash zero plus and f dash zero minus are coming to be zero. So differentiable multiplied by non-differentiable can be differentiable, right? We have proved that. Now let's talk about the non-differentiable plus minus non-differentiable. Let's take an example of modulus x and modulus sine x. Both are non-differentiable, right? Now we'll be taking two examples in this one. We'll be taking modulus x plus modulus sine x. And we'll be taking modulus x minus modulus sine x, right? Let's talk about the first one. So we have fx equals to modulus x plus modulus sine x, right? Now this opens up as x plus sine x, given that we're talking in the range of minus pi by two to pi by two, right? This is the assumption over there. Now it would also open up as minus x minus sine x, right? This is when x is less than equals to pi by two and bigger than zero, okay? And over here, x is less than zero and bigger than minus pi by two, okay? Now we have opened up this modulus. If you take the derivative, what we'll get? We'll get one plus cos x. And over here we'll get one minus, minus one minus cos x, right? And same range is over here. If we want to calculate f dash zero plus over here and f dash zero minus over here, what we'll be getting for zero plus we'll be getting two and for zero minus we'll be getting minus two. Right now you, you're seeing that over here, what we're getting, we're getting two different values. That means modulus X plus modulus NX is not differentiable, right? That is the first part. Now, if we talk about modulus X minus modulus NX, 
so this would become minus over here this would become minus this would become plus this becomes minus this becomes plus okay and now if we talk about f dash 0 plus and 0 minus what will be getting in this case we'll be getting 0 in this case we'll be getting 0 now you can see that it has become differentiable so this was not differentiable and this is differentiable right so non differentiable plus non differentiable can be differentiable as well and also non differentiable both cases are possible under different conditions right and now let's take the last example of non differentiable multiplied by non differentiable let's take the same example once again we have modulus x and we have modulus sin x okay we are operating in the range of minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 okay now the function becomes fx equals to modulus x dot modulus sin x right if you open up this function it would open up as either positive or negative minus x dot minus sin x right now for any range you can see that this function has actually turned out to be x dot sin x because minus and minus positive becomes positive so for any range this function has become x dot sin x only so modulus x dot modulus sin x is nothing but x dot sin x now if we talk about this function x individually is differentiable sin x individually is differentiable so this entire function becomes differentiable although we started with two different non-differentiable functions we have ended up with two differentiable functions which are individually differentiable right so that's why the entire multiplication also is differentiable so we've seen example of non-differentiable multiplied by non-differentiable being converted to differentiable functions okay so until now we were focused on the outcomes of differentiability when we we're talking about products summation difference and division right but let's now focus on how to calculate the derivatives of these conditions okay so let's first talk about the product rule let's say we have a function hx equals to fx dot gx right now if you want to find out h dash x derivative of hx that would be f dash x dot gx plus g dash x dot fx so this is our product rule whenever we have two functions multiplied and if we want to find out the derivative of that function we have to use this particular formula okay now the second rule is quotient rule and as the name suggests it is used for division okay so when we have a function hx equals to fx by gx now h dash x would be f dash x dot gx minus g dash x dot fx divided by gx whole square so we'll be using this particular formula when we're concerned with fx by gx kind of functions okay and the third rule is chain rule and this is concerned with the composite functions let's say we have hx equals to f of gx okay now h dash x would be f dash gx dot g dash x okay so this is the formula we are going to use for h dash x considering that hx is a composite function of this type okay? so with these three rules let's conclude this lecture and let's meet in the next lecture for more examples and concepts okay so thanks for watching